Welcome to Saw Logs Plastic Hubs, Jim Dedman. Hope you enjoyed today's video that I put together for you. We're always doing something interesting here in the shop. Stick around, watch the video, enjoy, comment. Thank you. My next little project <coughs> involves making a quick uh, mill repair. This is my, I've took it apart, this is my locking handle for my x-axis and what it is this is wore out now these are available like car lane or something and but the thing of it is i happen to have one but it ain't right so what my plan is today is i'm going to take this and turn it down to a quarter 20. then i'm going to take this metric bolt machine it Put, drill it basically all the way through to quarter 20. Put them together and lock tie them, then face them off and or make them in and basically face them off so I'll have the locking. Then I'll put it back together. That lets me use this one here. I will just take this handle, this plastic, and saw it to the same length. I got a similar lock. I don't forgot where this lock, I don't know where I picked it up off of eBay thinking I was getting something else or so it was something I got when I worked at Eaton. Ain't this I don't know. So the first thing I gotta do is get the chuck jaw slipped around the lathe <coughs> or put the ER32 collet on. I ain't decided which one. It might be better just to put my collet set up. So hang loose. Let me see if I can find something close in the collets with this method. The truth is not every project starts at the man saw. This one, <coughs> the first thing we want to do here is we want to prepare, this is prepare the outside thread. So the first thing I've done is I haven't found it yet, but this is going to be, I'm going to face this off after I cut it. This will be held in the ER32 collet, and uh, I'm going to put the collets on. I'm not I'm going to show you cut it all the way. All right. This is the boat. And it's going to run right here and do a little facing job on the boat. Let's get the Make sure it's nice and square. Now, you may have asked why I'm doing this. Why not just buy one? Well, A, I got the, I've got the pieces to make them. Now, right now, all I'm out is one hardware bolt. <laughs> yeah, Ace done got me again. Uh, we have a local hardware in Dallas, but one of the things I don't know if I mentioned it probably in several times in videos that I, my mother is 93 years old and uh, she's in a nursing facility in Shelby which is about 30 probably about 40, 30, 35 minutes from where I live all right, let me cut the camera. I'll just hold on a minute. I'll get. I'll just talk to you just a second with this. Um, I've got the the drill over here in the drill press from making the fixture for the uh, what you call it uh, to make the angles in that video that you'll be seeing soon. You probably will see before this one actually, and. Um, so I'm just going to drill through this is going to be a through, through hole then we're going to thread it number 7 drill the reason I chose quarter 20 is I don't want to take a lot of the wall out the other reason is I'm going to have to turn the machine in anyway and I'm just using stuff that I have. 
I had the cam lock here. Been here for a while. Like I told you, I'm not exactly sure where it came from or anything like that. So, that just makes life really good to have. Try not to, try not to do my stress relief thing on you on camera. Uh, I do have a bad habit, and if you watch my videos, you probably already caught it. Sometimes I'll just get to doing making a, a blowing noise. I think sometimes it's I'm going back to my childhood when I do that. Because when I was a kid, we played with tractors a lot. Let me find my tap, and I'll be right back with you. All right, I went ahead and put my Jacobs on, too. I got a little 34B. It's not a ball bearing, but it is a Jacobs, and... Uh, I, I bought it for things like what I'm fixing to do. It's an eBay purchase. You've probably seen it on my slops in the shops. cross your fingers anytime you power tap anything especially a bolt because <laughs> you really just don't know what you're getting with these bolts even though these are just little old hardware store grade fives you just really never know what you're getting into okay so let me get this out of here and change the collet and see what we can do with this other piece all right we're starting on this this thing's wiggling and i really can't i don't know where it's bent I put in there, and I'm just going to have to kind of, since I'm going down to a quarter of an inch, I've got some room to work with this, so I'm just going to turn it down and see what happens. I'm just going to take light cuts because it's out here in this pocket, and I want to push. And just see if I can get it to chew up and make something out of itself. So, this is going to be a challenge for my machining ability. Looks like it's going to work out. So, let me get my mics and stuff and come back and cut the camera off and bring you back and I get her down there close to the corner. I went ahead, and this is turned down to about 10 thousandths undersize. Um, I'm going to run a die in it, and uh, so we're going to set up for the die. I'll bring you right back. Let's see what happens here. That's sort of neat. What, uh, what you know? I've got uh, again. I'm gonna repeat this, and I think this is a, a comment you hear a lot on YouTube from a lot of people. Uh, I, I've got hex dies, and I, you, you know, uh, some machinists say that the hex dies are chasers, and some don't. It don't really say the packages that I got. Usually you see a lot of hex dies right in machine repair or whatnot. Uh, but uh, I've had them for years and have used them in a lot of jobs like this with really good success. Uh, so I can't complain about them. Um, case you hadn't seen it. There's several different videos on this. This particular hex die one that I made, this one here is really my original. 
that I've reworked and what it is is a uh, basically a one inch socket that's been got a spacer in it and it's had a plug welded to it this uh, hex stock on the back so and you notice I just have a wrench here and I'm gonna run I'm gonna do is run this up here and I'm gonna thread it all the way up to the end then we're gonna blow this thing off clean it up and we're gonna lock tight this sucker up and we're gonna put the uh, the uh, metric piece right on it so you notice I just turned the die around quarters is real simple to work with uh, sometimes and it's you know single point threading is really sexy looking on your for, for really sexy looking to see but the real practical truth of the matter is I might need to countersink this I don't really want to take this one out I may have to go over and get me a bit drill right quick and just try to countersink that because I don't think that's going to screw all the way up on my uh, part here so I want this to be up flush obviously I know it's a little bit I'm going to face some off and there's going to be some Loctite involved and stuff so but now what basically what you're seeing now is what you you get the gist of the plan here is to come in here and just make a actually like a stud all right let me cut you off a second and check this all right let me zoom you in a little bit i uh i basically hit this with brake cleaner and guess what i got here in my hand is it any surprise to anybody who watches my channel of course you know it's loctite but you see what it is 648 bearing mount loctite this stuff you know this is to remove it you got to have heat and i really like this stuff for these type of applications all right let me get a right and wipe that off we'll let that sit i'm not worried about that screw sticking out because the plan was i wanted to make sure this all's too long anyway so there's still more machining to do and the truth of it is once we machine on this thing a little bit here I'm not even going to do that I'm going to set that lock tight should set here in just a second we're going to be cutting against the thread so it will actually tighten up a little bit while we're facing off uh, I'm going to go ahead and just face this thing down and let me get up into some speed that will work for us taking great big cuts by the way I'm just I'm doing this by hand taking you know maybe 20 30 thousand to get to the and whoa you see that's why you don't want to do that that's the danger of what I was doing and why I didn't want to because see what happens it's, you, you take a small screw like that and it'll move we'll have to do something a little different we'll have to We'll have to go over to the saw or something, hand saw this off to keep from risking messing stuff up. That's the reason right here is why I didn't want to take a heavy cut on the lathe a minute ago. And it's because I knew anytime you deal with this stuff and the way it's hung out there and all, it can be a little hicky. So I want to tighten this up just a bit to get that lock tight to see it. Oh, that. Once that Loctite sets up, it's not going to go nowhere. There we go. Let me get a little bit more on it here. And I, I'm more dependent on the Loctite to do its job. Okay, now we'll just turn this thing around. And we'll take the hacksaw and whack this off. And then we'll just take the bench grinder and just kind of even all this up a little bit. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, and this is just one of them cases. Now, when you're taking stuff and making stuff, let me let me run over to the, the sander and kind of work this up.
Well, there's my little quick completed project for the handle. Um, like I say, see that lock tightens up, loosens up, moves just like, you know, if you need to move it, you can. And it's not the original, but I had everything, well, I did everything but the metric bolt. And I, I just picked one up at hardware, and that will be plenty good enough to tighten it. And you see, I'll just screw it out for you. See, it just screws right in. And this has been this has been getting on my nerves ever since I've had this meal. So there it is. And like I say, it's just something. If I, you know, I would have probably ordered. Be honest with you, I would have ordered one from somewhere, Car Lane or somebody. If I'd or McMaster or somebody. But shipping so ridiculous. And there, this is something you just can't go to a local supply house and get. And I just, I was fortunate. I just happened to have this piece here. It's a different size. So a little bit of my time and a dollar something hardware bolt. Now I've got both table locks working. And let me just take you over to the other side. I don't know if you can see the other one under the device there or not. I move the vice handle and I can see it there. Pull you back a little bit because it's, it's in the corner there. Oh, I'm pulling you too far there. There it is. That's the original. Let me center it up here for you. Let me get. Well, let me just cut the camera. Away. That's better. So that's the original one that Lagoon had on there, and it's a metal one. It's a really a nice one. And this one actually was over here. It was it was actually the one on the left. That the one, this one was the bad one. And probably what happened is, and I'm gonna probably switch them back. Is everybody works on this side of the mill, especially the DRO, and you hit them. Of course, you only really hit both of them. So I'm I'm well pleased with the way this turned out. Let me uh, see. Uh, like I say. I hope you enjoyed that little short, this little short uh, video on sometimes what projects make. Uh, basically, projects sometimes make projects, and you know I just I've been wanting to do this, and I just remembered the other yesterday when I was working on the uh, uh, I started on the mini pallet project. I hit and dawned on me again, so. I just got to looking, and after I got to looking, I said, well, I got one, and it just happened to look. Uh, how do I make this work? It kind of worked it through my hand, and um, so I kind of worked it out in my head, just saying, why not just take a bolt and, and drill it and tap it and, you know, make like a stud through it. And see, this, as far as what it's for, it's going to be plenty strong enough. You wouldn't want to use this type of rig if you really want maximum strength, obviously. But you'll notice, you see, there's a quarter twenty, and it's down inside of it. So, again, I'm well pleased, and I hope that you learned a little another dirty trick from me. It's like I say, sometimes you have to do little dirty tricks when you're making, you know, in your home shop, and. There's things we do in home shop that's just not practical in, in a production shop. I know that to be a fact because that's where I worked for a long time. So that's all it is. Have a good one. We'll see you later. Thank you for watching today's video. This is Jim. This, by the way, I will remind you, this is a copyrighted production of James Deadman Sawlox Plastic Hubs for your personal enjoyment here on YouTube. The other thing I want to do is quickly thank everybody that's out here, that's visited my channel, that views, that comments. Our channel is growing thanks to you, and I want to send you a sincere thanks. Thank you, and have a great day, and we will see you in the next video.